did you have a, a structure for it? Did you say, well, I'll interview all the students first? I, I, well, I wanted, I, it was a three, the, 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 the actual data production was in three phases because I wanted to, because of the idea of, again, with the, coming from the sort of the Bourdieu side of things and also I wanted to, uh, it's coming from a realist perspective as well and then that's sort of a, that's sort of a, that's looking at the, the complexity of, of, of social reality and it's looking at sort of the different sort of the way that it's it's stratified. So I was thinking, well, how, I want to move in from, from the bigger, wider society and sort of come down and filter it down to the people who the students who, who are sort of on the receiving end of this society's ideas mm -hmm. and how they're filtered through an institution and through staff and and how they eventually get into the classroom so uh, it was sort of a, 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 a in in my thesis i talk about the macro level the meso level and and the micro level mm -hmm. and the, moving from the view from above to the view from below so i was trying i was trying to 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 get across the complexity of of the area mm -hmm. um, and and using the idea of habitus capital and field also helped me to sort of um, put a stratif stratify it and and, and um, work work put ideas together and and it, it just I, I for me I felt like I was doing again doing it justice I wasn't just looking at students I wasn't just looking at staff I was trying to find a way of of reflecting the the complexity of the situation because m one of the reasons why I came into the doing the research was because it was all done in a very well this is a settled area we know these answers we know what these students are like we know that these people are going to do it this way we know that staff um, just provide information they're, 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 they're disinterested purveyors of information and facts and knowledge that they get from this this bigger idea and it wasn't questioned but I was thinking well hang on a minute I surely they have to decide what to use and that's going to be dependent on their experience and what they think an entrepreneur mm -hmm. is and what they think somebody in health might might think an entrepreneur is so there it's always being filtered to so the students are getting something that doesn't necessarily reflect everything that's out there, it reflects the way it's filtered through an organisation and I, I was interested in seeing how how that worked really. So that, that was the sort of the, the three phases and that's why I chose the people that I chose to, to talk to. And who were the people? It came about to do with the practical issues and actually physically getting in and talking to them and when, when the, um, I, it had to be timed with when I was ready to go into that phase as well and what modules were starting and when they were starting and I wanted to get into the first session as well because I wanted to get in when the rules of the module and the ideas were being yeah. were being laid right. out on the table and when they were saying we're doing this module because mm -hmm. of this and also because of the modularization a lot of the times the students didn't actually know the lecturers as well mm -hmm. so there's all that sort of negotiating of the power relationship between the teacher with the lecturers and the students as well and and also there was because now it, it's all it's modular modularized um, it, it brought different different pathways together as well so the students didn't know each other as well mm -hmm. so so I found that quite a useful space to be in with them uh, um, as an observer as well because I did I did observe the, the sessions mm -hmm. um, so I went in and I and um, I, I sort of did a uh, they they were not, they were let know beforehand. I, I I let the lecturers know that I wanted to do this and come in, and I didn't necessarily I didn't necessarily go into classes of the lecturers that I had interviewed because it didn't work didn't work out like that. Um, but I I wanted ethically the health people were really hot on the ethics and they were like well how can mm -hmm. we do, how are we going to get consent and how are they, what if people don't want to do it and we walked we talked through all the things that could possibly happen and how we might we might deal with them and I, i'm very pleased that they did that because it, they were taking it seriously and i knew that anything i did w would be ethically would be um would be okay so what we did was and luckily i did this first so i was able to take this into the other ones that i did they they emailed the whole of the group and said this is happening um, and she's going to come in and give a talk. If anyone wants to be, um, if you want to be involved or you don't want to be involved, if you're happy for her to be in, and they sort of, I left the room in the end. I, I came in and explained a bit. I left the room and they, they took a 
Mm. They must have taken a vote to say, you know, we don't, we don't want her in, and everyone was fine. And, and on the whole, everyone was. But I, there was the option there for, for if, some, if some of the group didn't want, to, didn't want me in there or didn't want me making notes, because I was recording as well. So mm -hmm. it was like I had to like, get consent as a group to, to be recorded as well. Um, so that was, that was OK. And then I just, I just sat in, in the lecture and, 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 and observed and, and made notes and, and uh, yeah, that's, that's, um, did you end up with two groups of like, oh, sports therapy? Sorry, sorry. I ended up, I ended up with three different, three different groups. I ended, I, I, I worked with, um, a group from health. I worked with a group from, um, sports related, mm -hmm. uh, group and, uh, uh, hospitality. So I, and, and, and it was interesting how it worked out because two of the courses, the sport, the, the, the health and the hospitality were vastly majority female and the sport was vastly majority male. So as it happened, it came out that that mm -hmm. was sort of, there was a good mix. There was a mix of, of, and also the health were majority mature students and the other two were majority sort of traditional school leavers. And, and so... Uh, by accident rather than by design, mm -hmm. I, I did have quite an interesting sort of comparison between the groups as well. And also the health were actual practitioners as well. So they were doing this um, and working at the same time. So there was, there was quite a lot of um, different experience to sort of have a go at and to, to explore. So you used interviews, didn't you? Yeah. Were they semi-structured? They were, just because... Um, I knew that I had, I knew that I wanted to look at Habitus Capital and Field, but obviously you can't, you can't go in into an interview and say, well, how would you describe your habitus? What capital do you bring to this? So I had to think of a way of, of turning the sort of theory into practical questions that, that anybody could understand. Um, so I did themes. So I talked about their family life, which is to do with habitus and capital and mm -hmm. the sort of upbringing you've had and what clubs you were in and if you were in a pony club or you did ballet or whatever. And that sort of, um, or if you didn't and whether your family valued education. And so that, to me, that was that was a way of talking about habitus, talking about the way the, the, the socially sort of produced side of things and who you are as a person and where you sit within your community and within your, mm -hmm. within your family. And... And then I talked about, uh, we, we talked about um, thinking about what an entrepreneur is and who an entrepreneur is, because I was trying to look at what they thought, what capital, what human capital they felt entrepreneurs had. And then I talked about them and, and, and what their aspirations were, had they thought about setting up a business. Because I was, I was trying to see whether they, there was sort of a mismatch as far as they were concerned about how society projects um, entrepreneurs and how they feel about themselves mm. in that position. So... Um, and the, the, so I was, I was, I was trying to sort of build, build on those themes, but, but in a way that was very, very, mm -hmm. very, very broad. Um, and so that, that's, that's why it was semi-structured. And also I'm interested in, I was interested in the complexity. It, it, it's, it makes it really difficult when you then come to do your analysis but I wanted to again do justice to the people I was talking to you, they don't all fit into mm -hmm. the same box they haven't all had the same experience they're not all going to respond to to a question in the same way or understand it in the same way or you know want to talk about it in the same way so I felt that doing the themes um, which which I've got we've got in here just gave people freedom to actually talk about what was it what they felt was important about the situation that they were in rather than me preempting well they should find this important and what were your themes um well if i i've, I've got the uh, I, I did different themes for teachers and different themes for students which which themes are you would you be are you interested in about looking at the student interviews um oh, i can't because it was semi-structured i can't sort of <laughs> right here we go um, it was sort of topics, so I looked at family background, I looked at educational background, um, so then I was looking at capital and habitus. I looked at um, why they chose the university they chose, why they chose the course they chose, um, their own ideas about enterprise and entrepreneurship, whether they knew anyone who they, can, who, they, who they thought was an entrepreneur, whether they thought 
whether they would call themselves an entrepreneur, whether they could be an entrepreneur. And um, I talked, I asked them whether they were interested in setting up a business. And I tried to talk about gender, but it was quite difficult because I didn't want to sort of, I asked them about the course and why, um, why they thought that it, it appealed. I, I sort of, you know, I went into your course and there were, there were a lot of women on, I, there, there weren't a lot of men on the course. And mm. I got them to talk about well, why they thought that women might do that course and men wouldn't do the course. So I sort of got, I got the gender ideas, I hope sort of quite subtly mm. in there. Cause it was so obvious when I stood up to ask the questions, but it just stood out that I was either in a room almost completely full of, of male students or almost completely full of female students. Mm. So I just got them talking about that and, and their ideas about the subject. And, and, um, and then I got them to do, um, I got, uh, uh, oh, I've done it in the wrong order. Right at the beginning, I got them to draw. I, I got them to, I, I asked them, just as like a fun exercise to get into the, sort of loosen things up a bit and get them a bit relaxed. I, I asked them to, to just draw out very roughly the sort of images and ideas and words that came to mind when they heard the word entrepreneur. So they scribbled out on, on, on paper um, what things came up for them. Um, some of them drew, did drawings. And, and for me, that, that, that acted as a, as a starting point later on um, to start talking about their family because some of them might put my husband in or my, my dad or my mum and that gave me some ideas to then sort of follow up later on but it was also to get to get an idea for immediately unthought about what are the taken for granted ideas that they've got in their Absolutely. mind that they're carrying about with them about who an entrepreneur is mm. and just to very quickly just the first the first things that came out um, and that was quite that was quite an interesting exercise uh, for them and, and for me as well and then at the end to sort of top off the um, the interview I got um, there's a, a there's like a tick box of yes and no's that are you an entrepreneur are you are you potentially an entrepreneur and I got them to talk through rather than going through and just going tick 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 I, I asked them to talk through to read the question out and to talk through their responses and, and why they were thinking about putting a yes or a no and and why what 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 sort of responses that that brought to them because I realized that in a lot of entrepreneurship education there's a lot of these tick box things do you have these traits are you this type of person and I was I, I'd been reading about the way that there's there's sometimes a gender bias and those sort of things because if you perceive or if it's perceived as a as a as a as a masculine area or a feminine area there's like a confidence bias mm. linked with gender so people will answer differently and, and I just wanted to, to look at that and how that how that might how that might play out but just get them to vocalize what they were saying so I wasn't so much interested in how many yeses they put I was interested in why they decided yeah. the answer was a yes or a no and that was quite that was quite interesting as so well. So how did they vary from the themes that you use for the staff? Well, with the staff, I was interested in how they decided what to use in the curriculum and whether it was more about, whether it was based on research, whether it was based on um, evidence that they'd got from this big, this big um, set of evidence from the sort of the outside university, but research and also TV. And I just wanted to know how, what their framework was. And because a lot, of, um, a lot of staff have come from a business background or they've been entrepreneurs, I was interested in the, the balance between um, their own ideas and their own experiences um, and how that informed their ideas about what was important for students to know mm. or what was important to tell them or what entrepreneurs were or who entrepreneurs were. And I was just interested in their teaching style and also about how they interacted with students. And so the staff interviews are different. There's, there's still themes there, but it's, it's sort of more about, um, I suppose it's more focused in some ways on their on their teaching. So I asked about their role. I asked them to describe their role. And some of them had more than one role. They were doing different things. Mm -hmm. um, when they first became aware of entrepreneurship as a concept or an idea was a the with a theoretical base rather than a practical base. Um, how they go about preparing a lesson or a module. What they, how did they, de they, they decide on the teaching materials and things they're going to use. Um, and then I asked them about entrepreneurship and I just said, about examples of people you might use in the classroom and why you think they, they would be 
representative of entrepreneurship and why they would be helpful for, why that would be helpful mm -hmm. for your students and um, I asked about the teaching approach I asked about a positive classroom experience and a negative classroom experience what works what doesn't and I asked about student responses obviously they're not in a business school they're in a subject area where they're not necessarily expecting to have entrepreneurship education so is that received well is it received are they indifferent do they care and sort of just to get a feel for how students mm. were responding to it and then I always asked at the end of the interviews was there anything that I haven't asked that yeah. you were expecting me to ask and you know, is there anything that you that, that you want to add um so that that's uh, that's that was the the um the way that I approached the staff so whilst you were doing your interviews, did you use um, field journal? Yes, I used field. I used a journal. I started a journal right from the very beginning, initially as a practical way of keeping a note of uh, books I was reading and ideas that were sparking off, because I just I'd sort of be reading all the time. Mm. Oh, oh, that's really oh, there's a good, there's an interesting theme there. So I just so I could have it all in one place. And then I started to, I started to write write about the problems I was having with getting access to people mm -hmm. to interview and sort of things to remind myself to talk about in supervisions and just sort of writing writing things through and then yeah before I went into the interview I'd sort of write about um, how I'd got to meet that person and, and whether I'd met them before and, and how I you know what I was thinking about um, the interview before I went in um, and then afterwards I'd immediately write things that initially immediately I thought were a sort of jumped out or things that I just to get just to sort of like, almost like a debrief just to sort of and, and think about well maybe I should do this differently next time or maybe maybe this looks like a, an interesting area maybe I should sort of look at this and mm -hmm. just just to feel like I wasn't losing anything and also just to feel like I was actually doing something as well because when you're running around doing interviews it, it, I, I just wanted to feel like I was writing mm -hmm. feel like I was actually generating data mm. if you like generating mm. something that that that's uh, and also just a record really it's almost like a diary it's a it's a sort of a way of just thinking through problems as well and just thinking through things that came up that you might want to do differently like the way you came into the room or the way the room was set up just a reminder so and actually it was really useful later on in the anal in the analytical process to go back and read what I'd written after I came out 